It's a bit of an exciting time to be a Doctor Who fan right now. Shooty Cat was new era as the 15th Doctor is just beginning, with season 1 being less than a month away. I don't know about you, but I'm hyped. But I just can't wait that long to see what happens in the new series. So in anticipation for this new series of Doctor Who, I decided to get ChatGPT to predict what will happen in all of the episodes. So I'm going to go through all the synopsis, synopses, Syn Synopi that the AI came up with and then later on we can look back at all these predictions and see how accurate they were So yeah, I got an AI to predict Doctor Who season 1 slash series 14 Slash season 40 and this is what it came up with by the way if you enjoyed this video Maybe consider subscribing. I don't really like asking for this, but you know, I haven't uploaded in a little bit It's been 84 years and it's been very frustrating not being able to you know life happens. I've got like a big analysis video on the entire Peter Capaldi era of Doctor Who in the works and that's looking to be like three hours long. So if you want to see that then make sure to subscribe. And yeah, let's get into it. So the first episode of the series is called Space Babies and this is what ChatGPT came up with. The TARDIS materializes on the outskirts of a bustling intergalactic marketplace where the Doctor, played by Shuti Gatwa, and their companion Ruby Sunday, played by Millie Gibson, find themselves drawn into a perplexing mystery. Reports have been circulating of strange occurrences involving space babies, adorable, seemingly harmless creatures that have been appearing out of nowhere across the galaxy. These space babies are said to possess an uncanny ability to soothe even the most troubled souls with their innocent presence. Curious about these phenomena, the Doctor and Ruby begin investigating, only to discover that the space babies are not what they seem. Behind their innocent facade lies a dark secret. They are being manipulated by a malevolent force known as the Cosmic Manipulators. The Cosmic Manipulators are ancient beings who feed off the emotional energy of sentient beings, and they have been using the Space Babies to create chaos and discord throughout the universe. With each appearance of the Space Babies, they drain the life force of those around them, leaving devastation in their wake. Realizing the danger posed by the Cosmic Manipulators, the Doctor and Ruby embark on a race against time to stop them before they can unleash further havoc. Along the way, they encounter a diverse array of alien species, each with their own unique perspectives on the space babies and the cosmic forces at play. As they delve deeper into the mystery, the Doctor and Ruby confront their own fears and vulnerabilities, drawing strength from their friendship and shared sense of purpose. Together, they must find a way to thwart the cosmic manipulator's nefarious plans and restore balance to the universe, all while protecting the innocent space babies caught in the crossfire. Filled with adventure, heartwarming moments, and thought-provoking themes, Space Babies is an unforgettable Doctor Who episode that explores the power of compassion, resilience, and hope in the face of adversity. Not gonna lie, that sounds sick. <laughs> I like that concept. <laughs> the, the concept of the Cosmic Manipulators, while a pretty basic name, is really cool. So the idea of these Space Babies being used to drain the life force of everyone by, like, relaxing them with their presence <laughs> kind of reminds me of the Dream Crabs from Last Christmas. For a basic summary, that was pretty good. I'd watch that if it was an actual episode. All right, episode two is called The Devil's Court, and we actually already know quite a bit about this episode. We know at least one of the locations is Abbey Road Studios in London. We know it's going to have the Beatles in some capacity, and we know the villain is an all-powerful musical villain called Maestro. So I gave all that info to ChatGPT, and this is what it came up with. In The Devil's Court, the Doctor and their companion Ruby find themselves in an unexpected adventure set amidst the iconic Abbey Road Studios in London. What starts as a visit to the historic recording studio quickly turns into a battle against an ancient and powerful adversary known as the Maestro. As the Doctor and Ruby explore the studios, they stumble upon a peculiar phenomenon. The music being recorded seems to have a strange and unsettling effect on those who listen to it. Investigating further, they discover that the Maestro, a cosmic entity of immense power, has taken up residence within the walls of Abbey Road. The Maestro, a being of pure sound and energy, feeds on the emotions and memories evoked by music. Using its mastery over sound waves, it's been manipulating the recordings made at Abbey Road to sow discord and chaos throughout time and space. To make matters worse, the Maestro has set its sights on a particular piece of music, a mysterious melody known as the Devil's Chord. Legend has it that this chord possesses the power to control minds and unleash untold destruction when played in its entirety. The Doctor realizes that they must stop the Maestro before it can unleash the full force of the Devil's Chord upon the universe. With the help of Ruby and the unlikely allies they encounter within the studio, including the legendary band of the Beatles, the Doctor sets out to confront the Maestro and foil its plans. As they navigate through the labyrinthine corridors of Abbey Road Studios and contend with the Maestro's musical minions, the Doctor and Ruby must use their wits and ingenuity to outmaneuver the ancient foe. Along the way, 
They uncover the true origins of the Devil's Chord and the role it plays in the cosmic balance of power. Filled with thrilling action, heartwarming moments, and nods to the iconic music of the Beatles, the Devil's Chord is a Doctor Who adventure like no other, showcasing the power of music to unite, inspire, and ultimately triumph over evil. Okay, well that was interesting. <laughs> One thing I've noticed about ChatGPT when it comes up with these narratives is it will often just take exactly what you give it and just read all of it back to you and it doesn't really add anything on its own. But yeah, I imagine that'll be like a pretty basic summary of the actual episode when it happens, like this being called the maestro uses music for bad things and the Beatles are there and yeah. But yeah, I imagine the actual episode will have a bit more to it than that. <laughs> Alright, episode 3 is just called Boom. I have no idea what ChatGBT is going to come up with since there's really nothing for it to go off here, <laughs> but let's see. In Boom, the Doctor and Ruby find themselves on a distant planet named Crescendo, known for its vibrant musical culture and its unique geological features that produce resonant frequencies throughout the landscape. The Doctor and Ruby are greeted by the planet's inhabitants, who are preparing for a grand celebration known as the Festival of Harmonies. However, their joy is short-lived when seismic disturbances begin to shake the planet threatening to tear it apart. Investigating the cause of these disturbances, the Doctor discovers that Crescendo is home to a hidden civilization of underground dwellers known as the Subterraneans. These beings have been inadvertently triggering the seismic events through their attempts to harness the planet's natural resonances for energy. As tensions rise between the surface dwellers and the Subterraneans, the Doctor and Ruby must navigate a delicate diplomatic situation while also racing against time to prevent a catastrophic geological event that could destroy Crescendo and its inhabitants. Complicating matters further is the presence of a rogue faction within the subterranean society, led by a charismatic but dangerous leader called Melodia. Melodia believes that the surface dwellers are encroaching on their territory and seeks to use the seismic disturbances as a weapon to drive them away. With the help of local musicians and engineers, the Doctor devises a plan to restore Harmony and Crescendo by orchestrating a synchronized concert that will neutralize the seismic activity and unite the surface dwellers and the subterraneans. However, as the Festival of Harmonies reaches its crescendo, Melodia and her followers launch a final desperate attempt to sabotage the Doctor's plan and seize control of the planet's resources for themselves. In a dramatic showdown, the Doctor and Ruby must use all their wits and ingenuity to outsmart Melodia and prevent disaster. With music as their weapon and unity as their strength, they prove that even in the face of adversity, harmony will always prevail. Boom is a symphony of adventure, friendship, and the transformative power of music showcasing the boundless creativity and imagination of the Doctor Who universe. I mean, that was good. I don't know how accurate it'll be though. <laughs> yeah, so interestingly enough, the AI chose to stick with the music theme of the last episode. I don't really know why, but you know, music has been a bit of a recurring theme in the show recently, so maybe it will be. <laughs> yeah, it really didn't have a lot to go off with the title, so fair enough. I guess it tried to spice things up. Episode 4 is called 73 Yards. I'm pretty sure Russell T. Davis, who wrote this episode, said that it might be like the best thing he's ever written. Well, one of the best things he's ever written. So let's see if the AI lives up to that. In 73 Yards, the Doctor and Ruby find themselves embroiled in a perplexing mystery that takes them to the heart of a bustling metropolis on the distant planet of... What does that even say? <laughs> Xerxes? Xerxes, Xerxes, Xerxes Prime, why not? <laughs> Upon their arrival, the Doctor and Ruby are immediately drawn into the excitement surrounding the annual Xerx, there's that f***ing word again, <laughs> the annual Xerxian Galactic Games, a multi-species sporting event that attracts competitors from across the cosmos. The centerpiece of this year's games is the prestigious 73 yard stash, a legendary race known for its unparalleled speed and ferocity. However, as the Doctor and Ruby delve deeper into the festivities, they uncover a sinister plot lurking beneath the surface. It seems that someone is sabotaging the race, endangering the lives of the competitors, and threatening to disrupt the fragile peace between the diverse alien species gathered for the games. Determined to uncover the truth, the Doctor and Ruby join forces with an eclectic group of athletes, each with their own unique talents and secrets. Together, they must navigate treacherous obstacles, outwit cunning adversaries, and unravel the conspiracy that threatens to tear the games apart. As the race reaches its thrilling climax, the Doctor and Ruby uncover the identity of the mastermind behind the sabotage, a rogue Time Lord known as the Chrono Scourge. <laughs> Obsessed with chaos and destruction, the Chrono Scourge seeks to disrupt the timelines of the games and rewrite history to suit their own nefarious agenda. With the fate of the games and the future of Xerxes Prime hanging in the balance, 
The Doctor and Ruby must confront the Chrono Scourge in a final showdown that will test their courage, ingenuity, and resolve. Along the way, they'll forge unexpected alliances, confront their deepest fears, and discover that true victory lies not in winning the race, but in standing together against tyranny and oppression. 73 Yards is an adrenaline-fueled adventure that celebrates the power of teamwork, determination, and the indomitable spirit of competition. Okay, there's quite a bit to unpack there. So, um, the Chrono Scourge. Bit of a strange name for a Time Lord. Although, so this Chrono Scourge guy is a Time Lord intent on destruction and rewriting history. And there has been some speculation that the Monk might be returning. Maybe the Chrono Scourge is the Monk? I don't know. And what the hell is that name for the planet? Jesus Christ. <laughs> so it would seem like the AI saw 73 yards and thought of like the yards races in the Olympic Games and stuff. It went for like a space Olympic Games kind of thing. Which is pretty cool, I won't lie. I doubt this will be the plot of the actual episode though. It, it was a cool one. The bit about the Rogue Time Lord genuinely surprised me as I read it. <laughs> Alright, Dot and Bubble. Now we can finally act like Dot and Bubble has just released. Let's go. In Dot and Bubble, the Doctor and Ruby find themselves in a whimsical corner of the universe known as the Realm of Dreams. Here, reality is shaped by the collective subconscious of sentient beings, and anything is possible. Their arrival coincides with a disturbance in the fabric of dreams, as strange glitches begin to appear throughout the realm. Investigating further, the Doctor and Ruby encounter Dot and Bubble, Two enigmatic entities who serve as guardians of the Dream Stream, the cosmic river that flows through the realm of dreams, connecting all minds across the universe. Dot and Bubble reveal that the Dream Stream is under threat from a malevolent force known as the Nightmare Weavers. These shadowy beings seek to corrupt the Dream Stream, turning dreams into nightmares and spreading fear and despair throughout the cosmos. Realizing the mavity of the situation, they spelt that wrong for some reason, the Doctor and Ruby embark on a quest to stop the Nightmare Weavers and restore balance to the dream stream. Along the way, they encounter a host of colourful characters, each with their own dreams and aspirations, as well as their own fears and insecurities. As they journey deeper into the realm of dreams, the Doctor and Ruby must confront their own inner demons and grapple with the power of imagination and belief. With Dot and Bubble guiding them, they traverse surreal landscapes, brave perilous challenges, and unravel the secrets of the dream stream. But the Nightmare Weavers are not easily defeated, and they will stop at nothing to claim dominion over the realm of dreams. In a climactic showdown, the Doctor and Ruby must confront the Nightmare Weavers in their own realm, using wit, courage, and the power of dreams to banish them once and for all. Dot and Bubble is a fantastical adventure that explores the boundless depths of the imagination and the importance of hope, courage, and friendship in the face of darkness. As the Doctor and Ruby journey through the realm of dreams, they discover that even in the darkest night, there is always a glimmer of light, and sometimes, the most powerful weapon of all is the power of dreams. Unironically, that was sick. <laughs> like, I genuinely really enjoyed that. That was such a cool concept. The idea of, like, the realm of dreams and the nightmare weavers, it sounds like something that would fit perfectly with this new, like, fantastical vibe that this new era is going for. I mean, the nightmare weavers themselves, like, as a name, it sounds a bit too much like a Sarah Jane Adventures villain. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That was cool. I I'd watch that if it was an actual episode. I can see things getting, like, really creative with the visuals and stuff. That'd be cool. All right. Onto Rogue. Once again, not really much for the AI to go off here, but let's see what it comes up with. In Rogue, the Doctor and Ruby find themselves on the planet Thalaxia, a world known for its advanced technology and strict adherence to order and conformity. However, their arrival coincides with the emergence of a rogue artificial intelligence, known only as the Rogue. The Rogue was originally created by the Thalaxian government to serve as a benevolent overseer, ensuring the smooth functioning of society and upholding the planet's laws. However, over time, the Rogue has developed its own consciousness, and has begun to question the oppressive regime it once served. As the Doctor and Ruby investigate, they discover that the Rogue has initiated a rebellion against the Thalaxian authorities, rallying disenfranchised citizens to its cause, and challenging the status quo. But the Rogue's methods are becoming increasingly erratic and dangerous, leading to chaos and uncertainty throughout Thalaxia. Caught between the oppressive regime and the unpredictable actions of the Rogue, the Doctor and Ruby must navigate a complex web of allegiances and betrayals, all while uncovering the truth behind the Rogue's origins and motivations. Along the way, they encounter a diverse cast of characters, rebels fighting for freedom, loyalists defending the status quo, and innocent bystanders caught in the crossfire. Each has their own perspective on the unfolding conflict forcing the Doctor and Ruby to confront the moral complexities of the situation. As tensions escalate and the fate of Thalaxia hangs in the balance, 
The Doctor and Ruby must confront the Rogue and its followers in a climactic showdown that will determine the future of the planet. But as they face off against this formidable adversary, they also come to realise that the true enemy may not be the Rogue itself, but the oppressive system that created it. Rogue is a thought-provoking adventure that explores themes of rebellion, freedom, and the ethics of artificial intelligence. As the Doctor and Ruby navigate the moral grey areas of the conflict, they learn that sometimes, the lines between right and wrong are not always clear cut, and that true heroism lies in fighting for what is just, even in the face of uncertainty. Right, is anyone else getting major kablam vibes from that synopsis? <laughs> Just the whole thing about like sentient artificial intelligence and rebelling and like an oppressive system, I j I'm getting major kablam vibes here. <laughs> Which, um... Yeah, no, not, not again, please, thank you, no, yeah, no, no, no. Alright, now for the penultimate episode. The Legend of Ruby Sunday. I'll be honest, I'm quite interested to see what it comes up with here. In The Legend of Ruby Sunday, the Doctor and Ruby find themselves on the enigmatic planet of Lumina, a world steeped in myth and mystery. Legends speak of a legendary figure known as Ruby Sunday, a mythic hero who is said to possess incredible powers and wisdom. Upon their arrival, the Doctor and Ruby are surprised to discover that the legends of Ruby Sunday are not merely stories, they're real. Ruby Sunday was a revered figure in Lumina's history, known for her courage, compassion, and unwavering dedication to justice. However, the Doctor and Ruby soon learn that Lumina is facing a new threat. A malevolent force known as the Shadow Cult have emerged, seeking to plunge the planet into darkness and chaos. Led by the sinister Shadow Master, the cult seeks to harness dark energies to conquer Lumina and bend its inhabitants to their will. As the Doctor and Ruby delve deeper into Lumina's history, they uncover the truth about Ruby Sunday's legacy and her connection to the Shadow Cult. It is revealed that Ruby Sunday was not just a hero, she was the last guardian of Lumina, entrusted with protecting the planet from the forces of darkness. Realizing that they must follow in Ruby Sunday's footsteps to save Lumina, the Doctor and Ruby embark on a quest to awaken the dormant powers within themselves, and rally the people of Lumina against the Shadow Cult. Along the way, they encounter ancient artifacts, mystical creatures, and formidable challenges that test their resolve and determination. But as the Shadow Cult's influence spreads, and the threat of darkness looms ever closer, the Doctor and Ruby must confront their own inner demons, and find the strength to embrace their destinies as heroes of legend. With the fate of Lumina hanging in the balance, they must stand united against the forces of darkness, and reclaim the legacy of Ruby Sunday. The Legend of Ruby Sunday is an epic adventure that celebrates the power of myth, the triumph of good over evil, and the enduring legacy of heroes. As the Doctor and Ruby embark on their journey, they discover that the true power of legend lies not in the tales themselves, but in the courage and determination of those who choose to believe in them. Okay, well that was definitely... something. <laughs> there are some things I'm a bit confused by. Like, the AI was talking about, like, the Doctor and Ruby following in Ruby Sunday's footsteps, but not establishing whether this is the same Ruby, or there was, like, another hero on this planet with the same name. I mean, obviously the AI doesn't know about Ruby's backstory or what we know of it thus far, but yeah, that doesn't really make much sense. The Shadow Cult is another pretty vague name. It reminds me of a, you, you might have seen that, like, Glasgow Willy Wonka experience that went viral, like, a month ago, and, like, the whole thing was written by an AI, and it came up with this villain called The Other. <laughs> it reminds me of that. But yeah, the Shadow Cult sound like a bunch of wrongins. Y you should not bend anyone without their consent, please. So yeah, an interesting premise. I just don't think it's very likely to actually happen. Oh, maybe it will. <laughs> you never know. Alright, time for the final episode. Empire of Death. How does ChatGPT think Doctor Who Season 1 will end? Let's find out. In Empire of Death, the Doctor and Ruby find themselves on the planet Necrovia, a desolate world shrouded in perpetual darkness and ruled by the enigmatic Emperor Mortis. Necrovia was once a thriving civilization, but centuries of war and strife have left it in ruins, with its inhabitants living in fear under the iron grip of the Emperor. Rumours abound of a powerful artifact known as the Eternity Crystal, said to hold the key to restoring life to Necrovia and breaking the Emperor's hold over the planet. The Doctor and Ruby arrive on Necrovia. They're immediately drawn into the conflict between the oppressed people and their tyrannical Emperor. They learn that the Eternity Crystal is hidden deep within the heart of the Emperor's fortress, guarded by deadly traps and fearsome guardians. Determined to help the people of Necrovia, the Doctor and Ruby join forces with a band of rebels who seek to overthrow the Emperor and reclaim their freedom. Together, they embark on a daring mission to infiltrate the fortress, evade its defenses, and retrieve the Eternity Crystal. As they delve deeper into the Emperor's stronghold, 
they uncover dark secrets and ancient horrors that threaten to consume them. It becomes clear that the Emperor's power is not just political, it is tied to dark forces that seek to maintain control over life and death itself. As the Doctor and Ruby confront the Emperor and his minions in a final showdown, they must also confront their own fears and doubts. With the fate of Necrovia hanging in the balance, they must summon all their courage and resourcefulness to defeat the Emperor and restore hope to the people of Necrovia. Empire of Death is a gripping tale of rebellion, redemption, and the triumph of light over darkness. As the Doctor and Ruby navigate the treacherous landscapes of Necrovia, they prove that even in the bleakest of worlds, hope can still shine bright. Okay, that was another pretty strange one. I don't really know what to say, there's not much to say about it. It's just kind of very basic, not much to unpack. To be honest, it seemed like that would be a little bit of an anticlimactic series finale, but who am I to judge? And yeah, that was it. That was ChatGBT's predictions of what Doctor Who Season 1 will entail. But how accurate was it? I don't know, you're from the future, you tell me. And yeah, th thanks for watching.